Okay, today we're talking about symptoms associated with vestibular or balance disorders. Hey guys, this is Dr. Squire Squared. I, I'm Dr. I Squires. <laughs> she is messing everything up. Hey, I'm Dr. Michael Squires. And I'm Dr. Carly Squires. This is Dr. Squires Squared. This is a channel where we have candid and casual conversations about anything and everything audiology. And if you don't know what we're talking about, stick with us, like, and subscribe to the channel, and we'll tell you everything we know about it. Maybe. Probably. All right, so All right. Today, today's a bit of a, a, an interview session. So we've been doing this uh, testing series, <clears throat> and I wanted to sit down with you um, because I primarily run the balance clinic here uh, at in our office at Audiology Services with our residents, um, and you have now become kind of one of our patients in the balance center. Right. So one thing that we do in our in our testing series is we go through um, first and foremost why are we going to do this test? Like what what's the purpose behind this test? What are we looking for um, as far as symptoms are concerned that would you know, warrant doing any of these tests. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about balance testing or vestibular testing, it's not just a just a single test. You can't really get right. a good full picture with just a single test. Mm -hmm. We talk about a battery of tests. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to invite you onto your own podcast to do mm -hmm. a little bit of, of an interview about what you've experienced because mm -hmm. I have been saying for a while we should probably do some balance testing here because of some of the the symptoms that you had been talking right. about that I recognized as what could be a vestibular uh, disorder. So let's talk about what what you went through. Like, what where did it start? Um, it, so for me, it started after I had our second child uh, a couple years ago, maybe a few months after that. So some of the symptoms, and I'll get into that in a minute, but some of the symptoms I had, I honestly chalked up to kind of like a hormone <laughs> imbalance thing. Mm -hmm. I had just had a baby. Um, and ladies, you know that that can just do all kinds of things. So I just thought I was a little lightheaded. Um, I wouldn't use the word dizzy to describe it because it wasn't vertigo or that room spinning dizziness. I wasn't falling down. I wasn't having trouble with my balance necessarily. Um, the best way I can describe it is that my eyes really um, couldn't catch up after certain head movements. And I remember one day I was home with the kids and our son's crib or bed has all these like wooden slats um, like in a row. And when I, he was moving around inside the crib so I could see through it, but though it was really tripping me up and my eyes couldn't really focus on that. And that's when I thought, okay, well this, this kind of sounds familiar. <laughs> this may be yeah. a balance, balance issue. Um, but like a lot of people, I kind of brushed it under the rug, kind of pushed it off because honestly, I thought there's no way I have a vestibular disorder. I'm an audiologist. How big of a coincidence is that? Mm. Um, so I kind of just played it off again to hormones and here we right. are. <laughs> right, right. But it but it, it felt to me like a, it was a little bit progressive. So over the, right. over the course of time, because uh, as you mentioned, our daughter's two, almost two and a half years old now. Mm -hmm. So this started a while back, yeah. um, but over the course of time, as you've gone into different exercises, right. we have a, a, like a small makeshift home gym mm -hmm. in, our, in our basement, um, and, and I remember you talking about doing certain movements yes. that were kind of throwing you off. Yeah, and I'm not gonna do those right now. Yeah, that we're gonna, I'll pan, I'll pan <laughs> out and you can demonstrate. No, this is not an exercise class, but there are certain uh, yeah, exercise moves where I would be moving around, jumping, my head is moving, and that was kind of throwing me off too, making me nauseous. Again, my eyes just felt like I couldn't catch up. And the other thing that's, that will happen, and because we're lucky enough to commute together to work, we don't have to take two vehicles. I don't drive a lot, honestly, because you're always driving. But when I am driving, and I look over my shoulder in traffic, it kind of trips me up. And again, not vertigo, not right. spinning vertigo, just a little bit of, of this kind of, oh, where am I in space, that yep. kind of feeling. Yep. Um, and, and one thing that's that's really, really important to recognize in this whole scenario is you're young, right? right. Happy birthday tomorrow. Yes, my birthday's tomorrow. I'm, I'm, again, I'm not going to go into how old I am. No, I'm, I will be 33. So I am, I mean, I'm relatively young. Not yeah. someone you would think would have a vestibular issue. When you or, think about, when, when mm -hmm. most people think about vestibular or balance, they think about um, older ladies and gentlemen who were talking about fall risk. Right. 
And right. while that is a, a major component of what we do at the mm -hmm. Balance Center, it's not the only thing that we do. I mean, right. I mean, we interact with young people all the time with either, like, sometimes even with injuries, sports injury or mm -hmm. concussion or uh, uh, traumatic brain injuries, right. um, veterans with blast injuries um, are, are some of the populations that we kind of look for. But, you know, young popu the young population of people all the way down to childhood mm -hmm. um, can it can really feel the effects of some of this type of these types of things well and i think it's important too to note that there are varying degrees of what the balance or vestibular disorders could do i mean like for example right. what i was diagnosed with and from this testing there's a certain percentage of where i am in terms mm -hmm. of that weakness in my vestibular system. Well, that can range. So right. really I have more of a mild case. Right. Plus I'm young and can compensate a lot better than some patients that we see. Well, that's other. That's another really important component is, mm -hmm. is what the brain is able to actually compensate for. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the balance system itself is made up of multiple systems. You've got your brain, right? You've got your eyes, mm -hmm. you've got your ears, uh, and then the proprioceptive system, which is essentially how your brain connects the rest of your body to the floor, to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and your ears and your eyes and your brain are all working together to try to keep you up and moving in the direction that you've right. decided that you're going to move. Um, when we talk about fall risk, oftentimes what we're talking about is a weakening of one of those systems, whether it's a weakening of the proprioceptive system like from diabetes or muscle weakness or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, visual system is, is a big one. We work primarily with the vestibular system in the ears, audiology, mm -hmm. but also um, we use the eyes to tell us a lot of information. So for you in particular, and, and we'll go through this throughout the, this testing series with vestibular, what we found was a unilateral weakness. Mm -hmm. And what that basically means is one of the ears isn't pulling the same amount of weight that the other one is. Right. So when you turn one direction, we always say the good ear pushes on the bad. Mm -hmm. You, It's almost like getting too much momentum in that direction and your eyes continue to go like that. Um, I had a patient this morning that we triaged, uh, she called late at the end of the week last week and we were able to get her in um, really, really quickly. It sounded like something that was pretty run of the mill, pretty common. The symptomology sounded pretty common, but when we checked for it, it was much more complex than we thought. Yes. Her symptoms were very severe. And I think that's what people generally associate with uh, vestibular disorders. I agree completely. Yeah, we. I think sometimes, I think it's just human nature sometimes where we let things get to the point of a severe sort of reaction or issue when if we would just check it at them, where, yep. when it's, you know, mild or first detected, um, then it's just much easier to rehab that issue or, so to, or to figure it out um, and to just compensate. But it is, again, human nature, I think, to just kind of let things go and be like, oh, I'm fine, it's nothing, it's nothing. You know, it's normal that I'm bracing myself when I'm walking around and I'm a little unsteady. No, it's not. <laughs> well, we tend, to, we tend to judge the necessity on whether we should go get it checked on how much it's impacting our lives. Right. And then putting your hand on the railing or, or up against the wall or something like that or just taking a minute doesn't really hamper our lives that much, but right. it's not normal. Right. Tripping is not normal. Falling is not normal. Mm -hmm. Being unsteady or fearful is not normal. Right. Ha you know, being dizzy when you turn to look over your shoulder is not normal. No. These are not these are not normal things for the human body. Mm -hmm. If you can, I preach uh, early detection and doing something sooner rather than later. Yeah. That that preventative maintenance type of uh, interaction with your healthcare. I preach it to all my patients because the sooner you do something. The, the easier it is to rehab, like you said, mm -hmm. and the better the long-term outcomes, Absolutely. whether we're treating a hearing loss or we're, whether we're rehabbing, uh, rehabilitating a vestibular mm -hmm. disorder, it's so much easier to catch it earlier. When the symptoms are minor, because right. your brain can take over, um, right. when you get past that point, sometimes there's a point of, uh, I wouldn't say a point of no return, but a point of very difficult to return. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, something, sooner rather than later is always good. Yeah, so hopefully this helped you with some of the mild, more mild symptoms that I have had. Yep. I think it's an important takeaway to remember that if you are having any sort of balance or, or dizziness, the word dizzy is such an umbrella kind of yeah. term. Um, so it doesn't mean that you have to be spinning around feeling like you're drunk or you're gonna fall down. That That's not necessarily the only 
thing that we look at. There are all kinds of symptoms, as you heard me say, that maybe you're like, oh, I've had that or I've, I've felt that way. Um, so again, that umbrella term of, of dizziness uh, could kind of encompass a lot. So just, you know, be in touch with your body. If something doesn't feel right, your yeah, intuition, yeah, your intuition's usually right on. <laughs> so talk um, to your primary care yeah. doc, get a referral, find somebody who does balance. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people who will test balance. Mm -hmm. They're they'll just doing doing a very standard, um, right? You know, video nystagmography or electro nystagmography. We'll, we'll tell you what all of that is, but just doing the basics doesn't really dig in very deeply. Uh, find somebody who really knows what they're doing and can really help you. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope this episode helps you out. While it wasn't a comprehensive list of symptoms that can be associated with vestibular disorders, like Carly said, if you've got something that just doesn't quite feel right, get it checked out. Um, turn to somebody who does balance testing, who talk to your primary care, and make sure you can catch something early um, rather than waiting until you end up in the ER where they aren't really equipped to uh, help you with a vestibular disorder anyway. Um, we really want to make sure that we can prevent accidents and things like that. Yeah. So we hope you liked this episode. Make sure to like and share. Um, if you have questions, then make sure to leave us a comment. Shoot us an email at info at herewv.com or give us a call here at the office, 304-428-2403. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about some of those tests that we mentioned uh, in that typical battery, mm -hmm. but we will also tell you how we go a little bit above and beyond with some of the gold standard tests for vestibular. Yeah. So until that time, thanks. see ya.